So, hello everyone, I'm Jackson and I'm very honored to be here. And this, uh, that is me and this is Hui Feng. But unfortunately, he cannot come to the Prague this time. So, I will present all the slides. And we both work for ARM. And our work is quite related to Zephyr. So, we are also uh, helping to maintain the Zephyr project. So today my topic is introducing a hardware level uh, device isolation to Zephyr. And here is the outline of this presentation. Firstly, I will give a uh, talk about uh, the background about why we need hardware level isolation. And next I will give a quick introduction to the technology we use. And then I will talk about the Zephyr device model and uh, following that, I will talk about the, how we uh, introduce the hardware level isolation to Zephyr. And uh, lastly, I will provide a simple summary. And uh, firstly, why do we need hardware level isolation? Uh, it's uh, based on a simple observation that more and more uh, DMA device drivers have been added into the art house. Well, I think there are two points behind the trend. Uh, the first one would be the number of the DMA devices uh, on low power platforms is increasing. Uh, for example, the IoT industry, uh, the variety of the uh, DMA devices is increasing. So the, the corresponding drivers will be added into the more and more the corresponding drivers will be added into the art house, right? And since the art house is still the mainstream technology to manage the low power platforms. And the second point would be there is an increasing demand for uh, running art house on high performance platforms. Uh, for example, the, the self-driving required the platform with high performance and uh, uh, the safety at the same time. And a better solution would be running the Zephyr on high performance uh, platforms uh, to manage this, uh, the, the whole platform. So as we all know, the, uh, the high performance platforms always come with multiple DMA devices, for example, the PCI devices. Right, so back to the Zephyr, as we can see more and more uh, DMA devices, uh, drivers will be added into the Zephyr. So this makes Zephyr more popular, which is great, but it also brings new challenges. Uh, so naturally we will ask, is that possible uh, that the DMA devices will bypass the system co access control? And if yes, how should, we to, how should we do to restrict the DMA devices? So for the first question, after some investigations, I found that many, many uh, DMA devices intentionally or unintentionally can break the system. For example, the, some bugs in the Wi-Fi chips can lead the permission leaks and thus enable the remote control. And also, we found that many, there were many DMA attacks that can exploit the uncontrolled DMA devices to steal data, install backdoors, and even modify the system. Uh, what's more, we all know Zephyr supports many platforms, right? And I think this uh, potential risk become, will become more critical. Therefore, back to the second question. Uh, since the DMA can bypass uh, the the system access control, how can we restrict the DMA devices? Well, before discussing how, we, uh, how to address the issue, let me briefly explain what the problem is. Um, currently, Zephyr uses uh, MMU or MPU to restrict the thread memory regions to, to protect the system. Well, as you can see the left diagram, during the context switch, the, the Zephyr also switched the memory regions for, uh, for the upcoming thread. 
as a result, the current thread can only access uh, the, its own thread and its, its own memory regions and is prevented from accessing other uh, regions. Uh, if, a, if, a, if a thread encounters a bug or uh, something else, uh, for example, the thread 2 wants to clean the thread 1's memory and the MPU or MMU will generate a data board to the system so the system can effectively block this uh, dangerous behavior, right? But uh, the MMU or MPU can only restrict the memory, memory accesses from CPUs. Uh, the memory accesses from DMA uh, devices are not protected by the MMU or MPU. Um, as shown in the red diagram, if a DMA device encounters a bug or, or it is a malicious one, uh, wants to clean the thread's memory, which is not allowed, uh, in this case, MMU or MPU helps nothing. Uh, thus, the protection provided by the MMU or MPU uh, does not apply to the DMA devices. This limitation uh, tells us that we need an another approach to, reach, uh, to restrict the DMA devices. Well, to mitigate the issue, uh, one solution is to leverage the hardware level protection, uh, such as SMMU from ARM, LMMU from Intel and other similar technologies. All of this can restrict the DMA devices. Taking SMMU uh, as an example, um, uh, the SMMU uh, shares, uh, the, uh, allows the system to share the page tables with DMA devices. And it's powerful, it's widely used in Linux and hypervisor. It can not only uh, isolate the uh, DMA accesses, but also elim the eliminated, eliminate the requirements for physically continuous page for, uh, for the DMA buffer allocation. The, uh, it can also enhance the virtual, uh, virtualization capabilities for the hypervisors, but uh, SMMU is too powerful for Zephyr. Uh, fully supporting SM, uh, SMMU in Zephyr will increase too much overhead because our goal is just to uh, restrict the DMA devices, not, not other uh, some uh, virtualization features. Uh, it is also inappropriate to introduce SMMU to the low-power platforms due to the power-consuming issues and uh, costs. So what do we do to address these challenges? For the first concern, we partially enable the SMMU. Uh, for example, setting a linear mapping, address mapping, this will allow the SMMU to reduce unnecessary uh, overhead, right? And for the second concern, we add a subsystem uh, to manage DMA device isolation. Uh, this, interfa this interface allows the driver to uniformly uh, access the SMMU driver or other similar technologies. And also, it, makes, makes it, it, ma it is easier to extend in the future to support more similar technologies because I think we eventually will have a, a, a isolation technology designed for the low-power devices, right? Low-power platforms, I mean. So since we have, uh, apart from the isolation, since we have uh, introducing, the, we have introduced the, the SMMU driver, we actually also enhance the capabilities of uh, Zephyr. For example, Zephyr can, um, can be as a hypervisor or make it possible that Zephyr to support more platforms, right? And, okay, next I will briefly introduce uh, the SMMU. Uh, similar to MMU, the SMMU also performs the address translation um, and the access control. But differently, MMU translate the addresses from CPU, uh, but SMMU uh, translate the addresses for DMA devices. So uh, typically, a, a platform always supports multiple DMA devices. Uh, thus, the SMMU also needs to support multiple 
translation tables. Each DMA device needs a translation table, as you can see in the diagram. And so SMMU performs the, the, uh, the translation for each device separately. It is also allowed that all, for all the de uh, devices share one uh, translation table, but it's not recommended from a security perspective. So this diagram simply illustrates how one access is translated by SMMU. Uh, typically, SMMU has a stream table and multiple uh, CD tables and multiple page tables uh, uh, access from the D DMA device uh, contains a stream ID, a substream ID, and a virtual address. The translation uh, process involves several table lookups. And when, a, when a access arrives, firstly, SMMU uses stream ID to find the stream table entry in the stream table. And the stream table entry will point to the next level, which is a, a CD table base address. And then SMMU will use the substream ID to find a, the right CD table entry. The CD table entry will finally point to the page table, which is used to do the translation from virtual address to the physical address. And uh, and the translation from VA to the PA is, is exactly the same with uh, the translation performed by the MMMU. So uh, the SMMU also provides some flexibility to bypass uh, the entire translation. Uh, in this case, the VA equals PA. And it can also bypass the substream ID if needed and it can reduce the translation table level by using block uh, attributes in the, in the translation table, which can accelerate the translation process, just like uh, MMU. Uh, additionally, SMMU also supports the second translation, but this, is feature is, this feature is really for hypervisor. We don't use this in our case. And when a platform has a MMU, the software can actually use it to restrict the DMA devices. Uh, as the left diagram shows, uh, without a SMMU, the DMA devices act can actually access the memory randomly, but uh, things are, will be different if, uh, uh, if uh, there is a SMMU. Uh, as shown in the diagram, uh, the DMA devices it can only access uh, the regions which is allowed by the SMMU and is prevented from accessing those uh, other regions. These capabilities help to protect the system from a uncontrolled DMA accesses. Next, uh, let me provide a brief introduction to the Zephyr model. I think the uh, official document has already have already. Uh, provide a very clear and uh, detailed introduction to the Zephyr device model. So I just introduce it very quickly. Uh, I also borrowed the diagram from the official site website since it's so clear. And uh, actually, Zephyr creates a creates the subsystem, which is designed to define a device independent uh, APIs for the application to use. As shown in the diagram, on the one hand, the application is simply programmed to those uh, generic APIs, and uh, on the other hand, the driver simply implements, the, uh, implements a uh, subsystem sub by implementing and populating an instance of the APIs. So, and the device driver data also allows the Zephyr to support multiple driver instances uh, with a single driver. And this is is an example of the uh, Zephyr device model, and the subsystem defines the API, and the application uses them to, to call the drivers, and the driver just populates the instance uh, of the API, and the, the, the device driver data allows the driver to 
uh, to have multiple instances for the drivers, for the devices. And this is a very concrete uh, example of two URLs on one platform, which is very common, so I will not uh, introduce the details. And next, I will uh, explain how we introduce the hardware level device isolation to Zephyr. So I, this is the subcontent. Uh, I will start with the overview design, and then I will talk about the DTS design and uh, also the subsystem design. Then I will talk about the implementation we have done, and also discuss the latency issue. Uh, in general, the the left diagram indicates the current Zephyr device module. After we introduce the device isolation subsystem, it will become a framework shown as in the right side, right hand side, and the the blocks in orange color indicates the modifications we made. And the device isolation subsystem mainly consists of two parts. The first one would be allowing the driver to register the devices into the system, and and the second would be allowing the driver to restrict the memory for the devices. Also, we use domain to define a address space, but for now, we only have one default domain. With the device isolation subsystem, uh, the DMA driver can restrict the access uh, regions of those DMA devices without considering which implementation is underlying. Right, this uh, framework also allows the system to support more uh, multiple isolation technologies, making, making it easier to extend in the future. And Zephyr uh, used DTS to describe the uh, devices of a platform. So we need to define how DTS is used. Uh, taking PCI devices as a example, Zephyr needs to know the SMMU node information, the PCI device uh, know the information, and also the relationship between them. Thus, the DTS should provide the SMMU nodes with the base address and the size of the MMIO uh, uh, registers, and also it should provide the DMA devices node with essential information like PCI addresses, and the, the ARQ information and the, the device tabs. Most importantly, as shown in the red diagram, uh, the PCI should provide the SMMU maps to tell the system which SMMU it is using to restrict the, the DMA devices. And uh, also, the, the SMMU map uh, contains a map uh, between the stream ID and the BDI, uh, RID. Recall that every DMA device needs a uh, stream ID for the SMMU to do the translation. Right? In this case, in that PCI case, the, the BD, PCI BDF is the stream ID. Uh, more specifically, in the middle of the diagram, uh, the devices, uh, uh, the device isolation subsystem we introduced provides several generic APIs. Well, this allows the DMA driver on the, on, the, on the left to directly use. Uh, and on the far right, the device isolation subsystem is designed to support multiple impl implementations, such as SMMU or IOMMU. The instance only need to implement the corresponding APIs, it is easy to be integrated into the framework. So we build a proof of concept on the FVP board, which is a simulated um, platform. The DMA device uh, we use is AHSA controller uh, on the PCI bus. And we use SMMU V3 to restrict the, the DMA controller 
not the DMA controller, to restrict the AHCA controller. The AHCA controller is not fully supported because there is no such driver in the Zephyr for now. And we, so we just temporarily create a, a, a driver with very limited features just for the test. Uh, without SMMU restriction, actually the simplified process to enable the HCA controller is allocating the buffer and signaling the, the HCA controller to start transmit. And in theory, at this time, the HSI controller can access the memory randomly, which is very dangerous, right? So, but now, the, after introducing the device isolation subsystem, just before kicking off the HSI controller, the DMA devices, the uh, DMA driver, use the, DM, uh, the device isolation to invoke the SMMU uh, to restrict the memory region for the for the HSA controller. And so that the HSA controller can only access uh, the memory regions allowed by the SMMU and is prevented from accessing other regions. This mitigates the issue we talked about and uh, protect the system, right? And uh, this diagram shows the, the SMMU V3 driver uh, control the SMMU with three just by sending uh, tons of commands to the command queue. Uh, the, the SMMU offers ac actually offers many functionality. I only list some uh, some common operations on the right diagram. I'm not going to elaborate on the implement implementation details since every isolation technology differs a lot. Well. Uh, yes, the SMMU typically introduces some latency for the system, but there are still some methods that we can use to help reduce the uh, latency. Uh, firstly, we can use linear address mapping we have mentioned. Uh, secondly, we can use the block memory attributes to lower down the, to reduce the page lookup levels, just like uh, some uh, some some cases in done by I MMU, and we also skip the substream table to accelerate the lookup process, since substream ID is uh, used to distinguish the virtual address spaces of different processes, and uh, and if possible, we can uh, we should uh, properly use. Uh, address translation services and to lower down the TLB miss. So, and also we should, uh, we can statically define some memory resources. Uh, this may help to reduce the times of uh, translation table switches. Uh, all these methods can reduce the overhead, but uh, the op uh, optimization really depends on the use cases. So next I will give a quick summary and our work starts with the issue that DMA can bypass the system control, access control. And uh, since more and more DMA devices drivers has be, have been added into the Zephyr, the risk actually is increasing. So to protect the system, we, we introduce a hardware level device isolation to Zephyr. And firstly, we introduce, uh, we, we enable the SMMU on FVP board uh, as a implementation example. And also we uh, add a subsystem to make it easy to support different isolation technologies in the future. So there are also some future works uh, like uh, try to send it upstream as soon as possible so that we can have a discussion on it. And this is definitely not the final decision. We just raised the topic so that we could, we could have a discuss on it. And also, if possible, try to measure the SMMU latency. Yeah. And yes, that's all, all of my slides. Thank you.
Hi, thanks. Um, can you do you know if um, any of this is possible on a Cortex M device, or is this something that you can only do with an A series device? Sorry, Cortex M devices. Mm. Yeah, like an M4, or do you need like an A? No, SMMU is designed for uh, Cortex A platform, okay. and for the Cortex M, I I cannot say. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Uh, Hi. First of all, super interesting. Um, uh, using the uh, API, can you change the uh, translation table for the SMMU according to the thread that is running on the system? Like, uh, for, for a thread, you want to allow uh, uh, some regions, so you change the translation table for the SMMU. Then on the next content switch, another thread is coming in, and then you change the, again the translation table to allow access to a different memory region. I mean, did the API allows that or, or not? No. Oh, okay. I, I, we just try to bring, uh, bring up a topic for if we can introduce these, these such things. And we don't have a concrete requirements. So mm. this is a, a, a need, really needs a discussion. Yeah. So, nice job. Um, is there uh, mitigation techniques to lower the overhead implied by the SMMU? Sorry? Uh, is, is there some, some mitigation techniques to lower the overhead uh, implied by the SMMU? Uh, just uh, I, what, according to what I know, it's just, uh, 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 just, uh, some, just uh, some method to lower down the overhead and this is an, there is no uh, universal I mean the general uh, method to lower down the, the latency we, the optimization should depends on the use cases okay. because as I'm you just it, it's actually designed for the rich OS it's not for uh, RTOS and Zephyr is using using the linear addresses right it, which is different from the linux thank you okay more questions there were no questions from the chat i think then thank you mhm mm thank you